How many Sundays are there in a particular month? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So here you can see a calendar for March 2025, and we can see that there are five Sundays. But how can we work this out in terms of SQL Server? Now, there is one way, which is probably the most recommended way, which is to have a date table. So a date table would have everything, including dates and in individual rows and all of the attributes, including which week date is. And then you can just use that table. And we'll look at how to do that in the next video. But what if you just wanted to do a calculation just for this one particular thing and you don't want to use a date table? Well, let's have a look at our calendar. You can see that each calendar month has at least 28 days. So how many Sundays are there going to be in the first 28 days? There's going to be, there's going to be four. How many Mondays? Four. Tuesdays? Four. So we don't really have to worry about the first 28 days. It's really the final three days, if they exist, the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st. I say if they exist because February only would have 28 days or 29 in a leap year. So what I need to do is look at when the final day of a month is. So I've got some code here, which is saying, okay, I am on the 5th of March, 2025, and I want to know how many Sundays there are. So what I can do is say, okay, what's the last day of the month? And that is the EO month, end of month. And if I put in my date, the at sign indicates it's just a temporary variable that I'm creating. And we can see the last day of the month is the 31st. Great. Okay, what day of the month is this current day? And for that, we can use either date name or date part. So they both have a similar syntax. First of all, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for the day of the week, and that is called a week day. So not to be confused with weekdays, which in Western Europe, for instance, is between Monday and Friday. Other parts of the world, it's between Sunday and Thursday. It's just what particular day of the week are you in? And I'll look at my current date and we'll see that my current date, the 5th of March, is a Wednesday. And you can see, yes, it is. So let's compare this with date part. So as I say, it's got similar syntax. But instead of giving us a word, it gives us a number between one and seven. OK, so how can we tie this all together with a case statement? So I can say that there are going to be four days between the 1st and the 28th of any particular day of the week. So let's test for the 29th. How many days are there in this month? 31. And I can find the day of any particular date by putting day round it. So you'll see that the 31st of March gets transformed into 31. So what I want to do, first of all, is find, has your particular month got at least 29 days? So I will say case when this value here is at least 29. Now, we need another condition, but just for now, I'm going to say, if it is, then give me a one, which makes five in total. If not, give me a zero. And if you've got a case, you must have an end. So that will give me a five, which is the correct answer, but not for the correct reason. Because next, I could say how many days are there in the month for at least 30, then 31. But I need to also test whether I have got the right day. So I can use this date name to find out whether it is the same. So I can say, and this particular date, I'll just put the word date just for now, is equal to the date that's required. Now, what is the date that's required? Well, the date that's required is the 29th of the month. How do I work out which day is the 29th? Well, there are plenty of ways, but what I can do is use the function date from parts. So this is where I can put in the year, the month, and the day. So what's the year that I require? It is you're going to use the year function, and it's the year of 
the date. What's the month? Well, it's going to be the month of that day. And what's the date that's required? It's not going to be the day of that date. It's going to be the 29th. We're going to be asking, can you build up the 29th, please? So that is the right date, but now we need to convert it into the word. So I will surround that with this date name brackets weekday that we've previously got. So if the 29th of the relevant month, if the weekday name is the same as the name that we want, then add one to our calculation. If not, don't add anything. Okay, so that does it for the 29th. What about the 30th? Well, we can do exactly the same thing. And this is just a copy and paste. So we can copy this and just change all the 29s to 30. And then exactly the same thing for the 31st. Now this greater than or equals to is a bit redundant because there aren't any months with 32 days, but the advantage of leaving it in is that we have the same style formula each time. So let's see what we've got. Let's execute this and we'll see that we have got five Sundays in March. What about Mondays? Let's change this to Monday and we have got five Mondays. Is this correct? Yes, you can see we've got five Mondays. What about Tuesday? We've got four Tuesdays. Let's go to Friday and then Saturday. Now this formula is a bit inelegant, I'll give you that. However, it only required me to write three lines and it didn't take that long. So if you don't want to go through all of the setup or maybe you don't have the permissions to create a table for a date table, then this is a quick way around it in just three lines. Now there are some problems with this card. First of all, this requires that I'm using the English locale language. So if I change my language to French, for example, then this Wednesday gets changed to mercredi. And so how many days are Saturday? Well, that would be samedi in French. So none of them, and I'd get the incorrect answer of four because none of them are equal to Saturday or Sunday. So that is a bit of a worry that unless you've got control over what language the user uses, you might get the wrong answer. So you might be going, well, I don't have to use date name. I can use date part. And you could, you could have date part and have this equal to one, for example. The problem with that is that it is possible to change what the first day of a week is. And that can be done by using something called set date first. So you would have to check if you want this routine to be really secure that you've got the right date first. And you can check what the current date first is by putting at at date first. So a seven is the default, at least in US English. So if you see a different answer, then you would have to be very careful about which date part you were matching with. So there's a couple of things to be aware of while using this. Both of these can be got round by using a date table. So you can set it up and then the values are in your database and you don't need to worry about somebody changing the language or changing the date first. However, if you're not concerned about that because you've got more control over the environment that your users use, then this is a very quick and very repetitive, since I did a lot of copying and pasting, way to work out how many particular of one day there is in a month. And in the next video, we're going to have a look at how to set up a date table to get around this problem. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please click a like and why not subscribe and click that bell. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. And if you want to know more about date functions, then why not have a look at my functions playlist? There'll be a link hopefully at the top right of this video at the moment. 
And why not join me in my Udemy course, where I look at lots of things, including how to use date, data types, and functions, plus a lot, lot more, all about creating your own TSQL queries. There's a link to this course in the description to this video. Thank you very much for watching this. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com and keep learning.